Good morning, good morning. Here we are, Tuesday morning. <clears throat> so lovely to see you all. I see that 27 of you are online already and the rest will follow. And uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. So happy to see you this morning. Let's just pray. Father, we just thank you for being our good Father. Thank you that you love us. On fast forward, passionately, without measure. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here this morning and that we already sense your anointing. Thank you, Jesus, for being before the throne of the Father as our advocate and our intercessor. We thank you, Father. We recognize your headship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Our prayer is your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Open every well this morning for us, Lord. Pour out your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. There is a fountain and a well that no man can quench. And it's the fountain of God. Ah, oh, lovely to see Denise and Engela, and Joe and Shirley and Glennis and anybody else that's coming on board. Some of your names have already moved up, so I can't see them. But um, yes, so we've had some rain and isn't that wonderful? As we've had some rain in the natural, I believe we're also experiencing some rain in the spirit. As God is softening our hearts, as God is watering the desert places and the places that were dry, and now he's watering those places and fret, making us fresh with uh, his love. Do you remember a few days ago I spoke about being invited onto his dance floor? And uh, I was thinking about that dance floor again, and I just want to say this this morning in opening, that God doesn't invite you to dance because it's your turn. He's inviting us to dance because it's our time. You know, normally all the girls would stand around the edge and wait for a man to come and ask her to dance. But now the Father is saying the dance floor is open and it's your turn, our uh, time, sorry, it's your time. We're not taking turns, we're part of the time of the of the romance and the dance floor of God. I really want to speak today about the tenderness of being the children of God. Yes, we've been given authority and when we open our mouths and speak, what we bind on earth is bound in heaven and what we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. But all of this authority comes out of an intimate relationship with Jesus. And so I believe that he is calling us back to his face place. We don't seek him for gifts and anointing. We seek him because we desire him as Jesus. It's in a time of lockdown like this that you realize that somehow we're running with a message that doesn't even have to mention Jesus. Some years ago, when I just started in ministry at the age of about 24, um, I remember going to bed that night after ministering at a big women's meeting in the city of Cape Town. And that night, my whole message went before me in, a, in an instant. And the Holy Spirit said to me, how much of Jesus was in that? 
<laughs> and he didn't ask me to answer. He just said, in the end times, only the preaching of Jesus will stand. And so we can have courses and we can have books and we can have teachings about the kingdom and about how to live on the earth. But if we don't understand the sovereignty that we live under, we are not conflicted by democracy in our minds or in our spirit. A democracy is where many voices are heard and everybody has a right and an opinion. And so when you come to know the Lord, you don't come into a democracy where your old nature fights your new nature and hopefully the new nature wins. You come under a sovereignty with what the Lord says is the way it goes. And if we will bow to the sovereignty of our King, the sovereignty of the Godhead, we will learn a new place of being his lay down lovers. Does this exclude us from warfare? Not at all. I want to encourage you that a, a short time in the inner chamber with your beloved is going to bring you out in a realm of authority that you don't even need to speak but as you even think it, so the atmosphere will change. And so God wants us to come back to that plumb line, come back to the plumb line of Jesus Christ. Let Jesus or Jesus Christ be his name revered and not a curse word. Many times people will ask, this generation so what do you do and who are you and we'll give an answer like I belong to um, I, I'll just make up a name because I don't want to be speaking negative only over anybody or anything they say oh, we belong to Zion Church but that's not really the question and that's not really the answer who are you and what do you do I'm a child of God. I believe in Jesus. My life was nothing until he came. He forgave my sins. He's made me whole. I'm on a road of a relationship with him. And then to say, do you know that there's only one way to God and that's through Jesus Christ? No, many say that's an old fashioned gospel. Just get them into the good music and then they will have an encounter. Yes, that's true. That can also happen. But it says, how will they know if they've not heard? And how will they hear if one is not sent? And so you are God's love letter. You are God's love letter to those that don't know. When I was first born again, my cousin came to visit me and Holy Spirit was working with me that morning. So I was overjoyed. And she came in and she said, how are you doing? I said, wonderful. I said, I can't believe that I've been forgiven and I'm no longer a sinner. And without salvation, I was such a mess and I just enthused about it. <laughs> and there was no embarrassment or restraint or any thought in my mind that is this the right opportunity? There was an overflow of gratitude and an overflow of the love of God that I could not be silent. And I believe that the Father is putting a good report in your life that will cause you not to be silent. I believe that the Holy Spirit wants us to look away from man's order of who we are and what we are called to and where we find ourselves in the body of Christ and what is our gift and calling. And um, that's all beneficial. And that uh, that is those are the tools in the treasure chest of heaven that God has given you to be able to be uh, to demonstrate the supernatural but 
let us not get on a sidetrack about building our gift up more and more until we have a name and people all know you because of your gift but let them know us because we are lovers of Jesus how will they, we they know that we are his disciples not because we're the leader of a big movement in the city and drive a fancy car whatever it takes but they will know because when they fall down or when things are difficult they'll say that neighbor i know that they know how to pray and they often say they have a hotline up to upstairs because if they don't know jesus yet then they they awkward around his name so the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. May the name of Jesus become precious in our mouth again. Let us not get into arguments whether it should be uh, Yeshua or Jesus. Depending on the language that you speak and the culture that you come out of, it's the most precious name. Jesus, 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 name above every name, wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There was a group of young people that were so in love with Jesus in the 70s that they became the Jesus movement. And of course, the new, sorry, the old always persecutes the new. So they squashed the Jesus people out because they said, that doesn't include the Trinity. <laughs> they Jesus only. That was because they were overwhelmed with Jesus. But Jesus is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and Father is Jesus Father and Holy Spirit. They are three, but they won. And then the next move was the move of the Holy Spirit. And then the old persecuted the new and said, you can't speak to the Holy Spirit. That's wrong. You speak to God through Jesus. You must not pray to the Holy Spirit. And so there will always be this, but there's no rank between them. There's only unity in the Godhead. As a new believer, we all ask that question. So how do we pray? Do we pray to God or do we pray to Jesus? And then I remember the Bible teachers of those days. I was born again for the second time. I was born again at a gospel concert, the age of 11. And at the age of 24, I gave my life back to Jesus in a Baptist church. And we used to have Bible study before church in this little upper room of the church. We will go and do our Bible study and then we'll go down to the happy clappy worship and the, and the uh, preaching of the word. And that would be one of the questions that we would always ask as new believers is how do we pray? Who do we pray to? And then eventually out of all the confusion we, we would come to this conclusion. Well if we pray to the Lord, it's Lord Jesus, Lord God and Lord Spirit. <laughs> And so we were so worried that we we're going to pray to the wrong part of the Trinity. How funny are we? What I love about being born again in those days is they didn't ask whoever wants to pray, please to pray. We'd be 40 of us, up to 40 of us in the Bible study. And they would say, starting over there with Sue, we'll go around each one, please pray. And you didn't dare say, I don't pray. You just prayed. And so you knew how to pray. Also with the reading of the word, you didn't say pass. I don't have my Bible. You took your Bible to Bible study. And each person read a portion. If they were doing the book of Hebrews, you prayed, you read three or four verses per person. So you knew how to read the word out loud and publicly. And you knew how to pray out loud. And the focus was salvation, water baptism, and then later on the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And we understood the basic doctrines of what we believed. On the scripture that says that if anybody meets you and wants you 
to ask you uh, what is the, your hope, you would be able to share with them the hope of your salvation. And so it was amazing times, amazing times. I remember doing the Otter Trail with my husband. I think it's a four day trail. We finished it in three because we both were very young. We'd just been married, but we were both uh, finishers. We were more worried about finishing and finishing correctly than about enjoying the journey. And so the last two days we squashed into one and we just went like fire rockets or crackers to the very end, which was silly because we ended up having to sleep on the beach in the night before we could cross the river to get to the national road. But on that, on that journey, I remember with absolute delight looking back that the whole time we walked, there was quite a lot of us on that particular trail, and the whole time that we walked, I was speaking to the Lord. I was so delighted with my salvation. I was overjoyed that I had the blood of Jesus had cleansed me from all unrighteousness. It was just so amazing. It's called first love. And Father is saying, I'm drawing you in this lockdown time back to your first love. You're going to find yourself wanting to read the word again. You're going to find yourself researching. I look up things about the anointing. I look up things about all different aspects. Two days ago, after finishing the live, I was sitting on the couch and I felt the Holy Spirit say, um, you cannot give away what is not given to you. And at first I was a bit perplexed. Am I giving away something that you said I mustn't give away? Or what are you saying, Lord? And I've been mulling it over and over, not to give away what is not yours to give. That's what he said. Do not give away what is not yours to give. And so as you get to know the Lord, there are things that you give away. There are nuggets, there are truths, there are revelations, there are even gifts and anointings. But there's a portion inside of you called the secrets of God that you keep to yourself. Joseph got into so much trouble because he wanted his whole inner history to be an outward demonstration before its appointed time. And Mary hid the things that the angel spoke to her in her heart. And she went to Elizabeth, who was with child, and told Elizabeth, because Elizabeth would be able to understand where she was coming from. And so Father says, I only share my secrets with my friends, and I call you my friends, because you are able to incubate the things that I speak to you about. That he will speak to you even about the seasons that are yet to come. That doesn't mean that everything that goes through your head needs to come out of your mouth. Some things are for an appointed time. Some things need to be hidden. Some things need to be prayed through. Not only for our lives, but for the lives of people around you. I often have people sending me dreams, asking me to interpret them, which is part of the package that God gave me. And, uh, and one of the questions is, must I give it to this person? And sometimes I say, no, the dream is not for you to give to the person. The dream is given for you to be able to know how to pray for that person. We, 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 um, we really want to always demonstrate the gift and calling of God publicly. We want everybody to see what we have. When my husband and I were first in ministry, uh, he would often be invited as the pastor to do meetings in people's homes. And I had already been in ministry, in women's ministry, before my husband went full time. And so now the Lord said to me, I want you to step back, Rose, and I want you to let your husband lead and grow in leading the people. And there was some frustration at times because you want to burst out and... I realize at the end of the day, it's out of insecurity that you also want to always be bringing something. <laughs> Anyhow, long story short, at the end of the meeting, uh, we would pray with people and I, it might be a house full of strangers. And then I would pray and prophesy. And then suddenly from being the insignificant wife that went along with the three children and trying to juggle babies and Bibles. 
um, suddenly they'll go like, wow, what a gift, and how do you hear God? And, and sometimes God will restrain the prophets and restrain the people and say, just hide it in your heart for it's an appointed time. There are many voices right now with this, epi this pandemic and there are many voices about the church and where it's going and what God wants to do. But I also want to ask you not to look for prophets for confirmation, but to inquire of the Lord as well. He's your father. He's your friend. He's your daddy God. He's never going to leave you nor forsake you. He's going to speak to you because he is wooing us back to the face place. So when Ruth came back with Naomi, Ruth was open to be trained and open to follow instruction, to learn, because she saw God on her mother-in-law. And so in the beginning, she gleans on the edge of the field. I don't know about you, but as a young Christian, if we were asked to do anything, do the, the tea uh, help with uh, giving out the bulletin, we were so encouraged that we were asked to do something in the ministry. And unfortunately now, people don't want to serve. They just want to rule and reign. I want you to know that there's a time frame in God's kingdom. And there was a 14 year wait between the birth of Ishmael and the birth of Isaac. Two seasons of God's number seven. And so God's appointments and God's release is at an appointed time. And so Ruth asked her mother-in-law, and at first she said, just go and glean on the field and pick up the sheaves that are dropped. For as they were gathering in bundles, there would be pieces that would fall off. And so she would and go and glean. And she was delighted with what she would find and what she would bring home. And her heart was in that place of just... Thank you, Father. There was such a gratitude and a purity on her heart. And then her mother-in-law is, is the type of the Holy Spirit and keeps instructing her. Be ever instructed by the Holy Spirit. In this way, you will progress from season to season and not be redundant in an old season. Ask questions. The word says that you do not even need a teacher if you have the Holy Spirit. It says he'll be your teacher and your guide. As Jesus walked with the disciples, the Holy Spirit's walking with us because he is the exact representation of Jesus. Jesus said, I must go so another can come. And that he will lead you into all truth. And so the Lord said, um, sorry, uh, Naomi said to Ruth, wash yourself, put on your new garments, anoint yourself and go down to the threshing floor and cover his feet. And wash yourself means washing yourself from known sin, but also washing away the old. She could not live the way she lived in her country. She had now come back with Naomi to Bethlehem, Judah, house of bread and house of praise. And every household has its own way of operating. There is a grace on you and your family and a grace if you're married on your marriage that doesn't fit somebody else's marriage or somebody else's household. I remember once going to a conference, uh, to attend a conference in Pretoria, myself and my husband, many, many years ago, and our children were really little. And we stayed with the, um, the church we went to, the, went to for the conference, placed all of those that were visitors at the conference from the, from, that were leading churches um, in the homes of their people. And Lionel and I ended up in a home of a man that had a military background 
And I remember getting up in the morning and getting out my hair dryer and wanting to dry my hair or restyle my hair. I went into the kitchen. There was one little girl sitting there, the youngest of their children. I said, I'm looking for a two pin, two pin plug for my hair dryer. And she took it out of the wall and she gave it to me and she looked at her watch and she said, can you please have this plug back here at seven o'clock? Because my parents listened to the news on the radio and the radio is plugged in. I went away absolutely flabbergasted, quickly did what I had to do and took the plug back on the instruction of that little girl because she had authority because her father had told her. And they did this every day. This is the grace that was on their family. They had a time frame for everything. I couldn't say, listen, you're just a little girl. I can do what I like. I need to do my hair. Find another plug for your dad. She had authority because she was under authority. And as we are under the authority of the Lordship of Jesus Christ, and we allow him to wash us and to form us, into the new kingdom or not the new kingdom sorry the new time frame of his kingdom you will um, automatically continue to go from one degree of glory to another it's when we take ourselves out from under the yoke and we go no that's fine god i'm doing this my way this is one of the biggest things that had to be broken in my life even up until the other day when i was nursing my husband three years and the last year he was bedridden and there were so many things that he would ask me to do when he was well. And I'd say, not now, darling. I've got other things to do. But now that he was not able to do it for himself, there had to be an order. And I realized if I keep the order the same every day, I will be able to establish something that will be life-giving. But if I just uh, feed him when I feel like it and, and give him his medicine when it's convenient, nothing was going to work. Uh, I also remember we would often, I drove a lot because of, his failing eyesight even before the stroke and he would say go this way go that way I said listen you're not driving if you're driving you decide but now I'm driving I'm going up but when the stroke had happened and he would say he would point I must turn my response became two are better than one my darling and I would do what he asked me to do because why not Two are better than one. And if he can't do anything for himself, at least let, uh, at least agree with some of these decisions so that we could remain one. And so I had to learn not to be had a cop. I had to learn that there's more than one way to do a thing. One thing about my husband, he was not a reactor. Yes, he would shout if he wanted to get his point across. But if the whole earth was falling down, you'd say, it's okay, we're moving on. Don't worry about it. Don't get upset, we're moving on. He would just, he was not thrown by the failure of people. He had a leader walk with him for 18 years, and one day that leader said, I'm leaving. And didn't matter how much he asked, well, he didn't ask, but we asked what happened. The guy said, look, it's just, just feels it's time to move on. And I expected my husband, because I'm evaluating this from a woman's emotional perspective, to be totally shattered. Yes, he probably did have some hurt inside of him, but he would just, he got up the next day and back he went and he continued to lead the people. And the bottom line is you can only lead those that want to follow. Let us not make the leader's lives difficult. Let us learn to follow and learn to be teachable. And so from a cheeky redhead, I had to put on those socks for him five times and every time he would have a, let me know it's still sore. And the Holy Spirit said to me, if you do this in the flesh, you'll fail, Rose. But if you do this with my Holy, with the Spirit, you will succeed. So many stories I can tell you about dressing his wounds, his feet. and But 
the bottom line is God will subdue the strong world and call us to come and lay under his covering. So she, we have to wash ourselves of the old way. Father, wash us today. Take the old off, Father. Have you ever had a person in your life, little old man, comes to the church or comes into your business and he goes, Dear, do you remember the days of the Welsh revival? And you're like 24 and you go, No, I wasn't born yet. There are people that live in their yesteryear. There are people that live in the days so far gone. I call them when we, when we lived in Zimbabwe, when we lived in Europe, when we had money, when we were uh, great uh, wine farmers, when we, that's not where you are. Where you are is what you have to now. Encompass, be teachable, be humble, honor those around you, there are two, mar and this is a bit of a sidetrack, there are two marginalized people in um, groups in society. Children that are defenseless and the elderly. And you might be watching and you might be my age, 64 going 65, but you don't consider yourself the elderly, but I want to tell you, you are being marginalized. If you, if, you're, if you cannot operate your phone and your children have to do it for you, you must know already you're being marginalized because they think that when you get to a certain age, you're not able to cope with this any longer. I want to encourage you to allow the Holy Spirit to open up those brain pathways. You are not allowed to accept Alzheimer's, uh, menopausal fog you need to stand with the fact that this body has been created to renew itself daily daily change what you speak over yourself wash away the negativity if you sit in a rocking chair you will stay in the rocking chair if you get up every day dress and put on your makeup it's so funny uh, yesterday I sent my daughter Bernice some photographs that I took of myself in my bathroom, you know, with my phone in the mirror. And I said, darling, look, I'm five kgs lighter this morning because I've got my heels on and my jacket. And she said, oh, you look magnificent, mom. I said, yeah, well, what we, we're, we need to dress for our future. We need to dress for where we're going to, not from where we've come from. So we need to wash off the old, wash off the old, wash off the old, wash off the glory of the past. We are going to walk in today's anointing. When it says put on the new, she said, wash yourself, put on fresh garments. And so far, Father has given us new mantles, even in the meeting, in the live. We have said thank you for our new mantles. Now we've got to learn to adjust and use a new mantle and then it says anoint yourself anoint yourself talks about getting ready for fresh oil getting your your supply of oil filled up how are you going to get it you're going to get it in his presence joy sand so wonderful to see you i'm not sure if you're in cape town or if you're in new zealand wonderful to see you online and so we need to get fresh anointing. We need to wash off the old. We need to accept the new mantle. And we need to get the anointing that goes with that new mantle. Because we are dressed for where we are going. Not from where we've come from. We need to dress for our future. Yes, Nalita says, thank you for our new mantles, Father. Because God is writing new things over your life and God is giving you a new passion and God is releasing you into your future. And do not allow the ceiling of where you are right now to be able to contain you for in due season, which means in new time frames. 
you will come in to that that God has prepared for you, even while you were in your mother's womb. While you were in your mother's womb, you said, this is the one I'm going to use to do this, this and that. He had already seen your future and your mandate. He never ever gives us a mandate to fail. He gives us a mandate so that we may display his glory and, uh, and be reflectors of Jesus. Do you know that God has des destined you for victory even when there's calamity and death around you? What a, and I wrote this probably oh quite a lot of years ago. Let me see if there's any dates in this book. I don't think so, but many years ago, and I just picked it up this morning and thought, mm, I think this is what I must speak on Holy Spirit. So he gives us victory even with calamity and death around you. That is the backdrop that we have right now. There are so many people that have died. There's so much calamity around us. And whether it is God or whether it is man, uh, God is always in the midst of it. I learned something new. I'm so excited about it. I was taught under different teachers that when Job was tested, that the enemy, the devil, asked God's permission. And that's true. And I was taught that no longer can the enemy go before the Lord or into heaven because the, the mercy seat has been sprinkled with the blood. But... I was listening to somebody speaking on this the other day on a YouTube thing and he spoke on the fact that he didn't compare these two. Just when he spoke on it, I went, wow. He said, Peter, Peter, the enemy has asked to sift you, but I will pray for you. There it is in the New Testament. So anything that comes against you, that whether this coronavirus is man or God, God allows these things to come against you for the trying of your faith, knowing that you will come out as pure gold. So for a long time, the new move in the church is grace and that is right but what about all the rest what about being long-suffering what about being self-controlled what about the fruits of the spirit what about these things are tried as by fire when the uh, when the the um the um cloud by by day and the pillar the pillar of fire comes into your life I believe that I had a pillar of fire with my husband that was my pillar of fire. I had to stand under the refining fire of God for my future. I had to, in that fire, say, God, whatever happens, I will not let you go. Yes, we need to do the warfare because the enemy is the agent, but God will allow it. And so do you understand that it moves us from a place of being self-dependent to be God-dependent when you realize that he is still training us? My father he would say to me, Rose, that mouth's going to get you into trouble. Because I, even though I was very shy, if I was comfortable, I would say what was on my mind. He said, that mouth's going to get you into trouble. My mother came from an Afrikaans background. She said, still blaze, work a goeie antwoord. Keeping quiet is also a good answer. Do not say tomorrow I'll be in wilderness and next year I'll be in Johannesburg. For you are not in charge of tomorrow. Today is your day. You're not in charge of tomorrow. I would have been in Pretoria right now, inducting a friend into ministry and celebrating a whole lot of stuff. Now the planes aren't going. God willing, 
God willing, I will see you after lockdown. Your life is not your own. It was bought with a price. So God is giving us new passion. So Ruth went and she washed herself. She put on a new garment. She anointed herself with the oil of joy. She was dressed for the future. She went down to the threshing floor. She uncovered his feet. Speaks about intimacy and she lay down there. And he said to her, no, no, don't stay here. This is not appropriate. But he said, there is another kinsman redeemer that's closer in your family line to Naomi than I am I have to give that one uh, a chance to redeem you first and that relative refused and so he was her redeemer and so now instead of her just gleaning around the field sometimes let's just go back to that that he had to first check that he was able to be the redeemer for her and find out from the other relative. Let's just think about that. Sometimes we have to do something that's correct over and above choice. We do it because it's correct. We do it because it's God's way, not because we feel comfortable with it. And we do it because it's correct. And it's God's way. This will bring us back to a, a people of honor. This will bring us back to a people that are God focused and not um, my rights, my boundaries. And so he became her kinsman redeemer. She didn't have to uh, uh, glean the little pieces on, around the edge, but she was redeemed as Christ has redeemed us. She came into the authority that with her Boaz, she owned the field. God will let you own, own uh, the atmosphere. God will let you own uh, leadership in your home, over your children, uh, you will be the head and not the tail. But it won't come out of a place of rights. It will come out of a place of surrender. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Father, your word sometimes knocks us for a six. We study so many things about um, self-help. Let us be servant leaders. Let us be those that serve before your throne. Let me say this to you. I, my husband would always scoot me away from the bed and say, Minister, Minister, I must go and do the ministry. He knew what nights I had to be at the church. Minister. And I'd go down to the church and do the prophetic school every Thursday night. And when I would get back, he, I'd put him in a chair to watch TV and say, Darling, please. Do not get up. I don't want you to fall. And big cushions around him so he could either fall asleep in the chair or watch the TV. And I'd get back after, from half past seven to sometimes later, half past ten. And he'd be waiting in the chair for me to change him, to wash him, to dress him and put him in his bed and at first in my heart it was like goodness me come on now lord and the holy spirit said after jesus had fed the people 
he went back with his disciples and girded himself about and washed the disciples' feet. Wow. Holy Spirit said to me, Rose, your greater serving is unto your husband than it is to those that gathered tonight. I pray that God has pierced your heart, not with a barb, with a love arrow. May everything that I've shared this morning not be tainted with one little piece of condemnation. There is therefore, Romans says, therefore right now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. There is therefore right now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. Nothing of the word that the Holy Spirit has spoken this morning is to bring condemnation. No, it's a love arrow and an invitation. After driving my husband for many years, and he never was able to drive again, I long for him to drive. I long for him to open my door. Now I had to open his door and scoop his feet in and all that goes with it. And the Holy Spirit says, I invite you to take a seat. And be ready for the love of the Father and the love of Jesus. He says, I come to wash your face today. I come to dry your tears. I come to remove every regret. He says, I not come to make you strong. I've come to tenderize your heart because it's my turn to lead, not your turn. I will lead you in the path of righteousness. I will lead you into all truth. I will lead you and present you before the Father on that marvelous day, faultless, without wrinkle, spot or blemish. What an invitation. What a beautiful Father. What a wonderful Jesus. Lord Jesus, we give our lives to you afresh this morning, not unto salvation, unto Lordship. We say, Jesus, be the Lord of our lives. We as women have so many rights and we've learned all kinds of rights. Men and women have learned that they have human rights. But Father, we want to thank you that today we lay down our self-will. We lay down our stubbornness. We lay down the hardness of our heart. Father, the word says if we come and we sit at the best seat, we will be embarrassed because the person in charge of the feast will ask us to remove ourselves and go and sit at the back. But if we sit in the least place, what a joy when we are asked to come sit in an honored seat. We thank you that you are the one that calls all of us and then you're the one that positions us and you're the one that unlocks us. You're the one that has gifted us. You're the one that has mantled us. You're the one that sends us. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Excuse me, I'll get a tissue. Ooh. 
well, yesterday and this today, the Lord has been so tender. Yesterday, I spoke about the anointing and that we wait for the anointing and that we need to have teaching on the blood and we need to have teaching on the anointing. And that the anointing is not about your charismatic personality. The anointing is what Father puts on you. It's a weight of his glory. And that we really need anointed vessels in this end time. And then this morning, he's speaking about headship. That he is the head. He is the head. And that our lives are hidden in him as you hide in him and allow him to lead on the stance that he's invited us into you are not going to become less you're going to become courageous you're going to become bold you're going to get a level of authority because of his authority you're going to be and i say this without meaning to be um um I don't know what to call it, but I don't want to touch on God's glory. But I say this, you're going to become Mrs. Jesus. Let him lead. We are followers. I pray that you have an awesome day. I pray that whatever you do, whatever you read, whatever you listen to, that it will minister to you in the deep places, that you'll find the joy of the Lord and the rest of God. One day in his house is better than a thousand elsewhere. Actually says one day in his courts, Stay in the courts of the Lord. I also just want to say that there are some things that might irk you about people or even about leaders. It's not our place to tell them what to do. It's our place to pray that Jesus will capture them, capture them in his net, his fishing net, <laughs> and pull them in. This is the day of household salvation. And this is the day that South Africa and Africa is destined to bow its knee to the name of Jesus, that all men may be saved to the glory of the Father. Have an awesome day. I'll leave the music on for a little bit. You can chat amongst your souls if you like. And uh, at appropriate time, I'll put the camera off. I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. God bless you. Love you all so much. You're precious. Goodbye.